Welcome back. Let's recap the seven principles of the G7. Whether you're using the laminated version or you're using the app, the principles will help you have a fantastic presentation. The first principle is that you need to show the diagrams to the person. You need to keep the diagrams optimal. So the person that you're sharing with is the most important person and they need a really good view of the presentation. The second principle is to keep your pen on the page at all times. So no woody woodpecker anointing, no conductor's anointing, don't wave your hands around. Try and keep your pen on the page and that'll keep their attention and focus on the page. The third principle is action words. Now these are the words that are underlined. So you're doing something with your pen during this word, like pointing or circling or underlining, etc. This keeps interest in the presentation. The fourth principle is text words. Now these are capital, bolded and underlined. So you've got to keep your writing and talking in sync. And we'll be looking more at how we do this in this session. The fifth principle is the turnover words. Now these are the words at the bottom of the script pages, right down here. Uh, and you're saying these words while you're turning the page. So that allows a nice flow through the presentation. The words in braces or the squiggly brackets are responses from the person. So you don't answer those, you wait for them to answer. And the words in square brackets are optional. So you can decide depending on who you're sharing with whether you use those or not. Now, uh, the seventh principle is emphasize words. Now these are in, in italics, they're emphasized. You want to get a, a balance of not being monotone and you don't want to be too expressive. So somewhere in between where it's interesting, uh, so your presentation isn't boring, uh, and you're emphasizing the words that are going to aid understanding. So there's the seven principles. Last session, we looked at how to create opportunities to share the gospel through the introduction, and then how to build rapport through the questions. We are now going to add up the score, give them their rating, and then transition into the gospel presentation. Now when we add up the score, the easiest way to do this is in columns. With the app, of course, it's super easy because you just it just it does it for you. But with the laminate, you need to add it up. Now, it takes too long if you had to do it one by one. Three plus two is five, and four is, uh, five and four is nine, and one is, you know, like it just just take too long. But if you're adding it up, three fives are 15, three fours are 12, 12 and 15 is 27, and six is 33, and four is 37, bam. It's done. It takes no time at all if you do it in columns. One of the side benefits of using the G7 is that you'll improve your maths. <laughs> but if you struggle with adding it up, then the good news is that you actually don't have to do this yourself. Ask them for help. Just say something like, oh, I'm not very good at uh, maths, can you help me out? You know, three fives are, and they'll say 15. Three fours are, they'll say 12. Uh, 12 and 15 is 27. So you're just keeping a running total uh, you don't need to do any multiplication, any adding, they do it all for you and you just keep the running total and at the end you get the right figure. And then they're involved in the process as well. So what you do not want to do is this. You don't want to go, okay, let's add up your score. Uh, carry the one. Because uh, you've got this big silence and you've totally lost them. So after you add up the score, you go through the ratings. So you're up to line number eight on page two of your G7. So you're reading those lines. Now let me rate this for you. 49 to 50 is angelic, so you're not an angel. 46 to 48 is saintly, so I can't call you saint and then put their name in there. According to this standard, you're a good person. At least you didn't get struggling or seek help. Now like I said before, I'll give you the best definition you've ever heard of what a Christian is. This is also a summary of the message of the entire Bible in about six and a half minutes. It'd be great to see what you think of this. Now that line of course is a turnover sentence, so you're turning the page as you're saying that. The best side people. You're going to get a great score. You've got four, uh, four fives are 20, and four fours are 16. It's 36, and six is 42. Fantastic. <laughs> 49 to 50 is angelic, so you're not an angel. Sorry about that. 36 to 48 is saint, man. so you're not saint, but not saint Travis. But you are good. That's all right, eh? At least yeah, you're not good, strong, good. Good. Well, at least we're good. <laughs> now, like I said to you before, I'll give you the best definition you've ever heard of what a Christian is. Yeah, this is also a summary of the Bible in about six and a half minutes. So it'll be interesting to see what you think of it. The Bible says that God, the creator of the universe, is holy, and heaven is holy, and holy simply means perfect. 
in the God made people perfect to have a friendship with him. The Bible also says that all of us have a body and a soul, and at death your body is buried or cremated, but your soul, the real you, lives on forever, either in heaven or in hell. There's no dead place. The one who is entirely perfect. Just everyone? <laughs> Just everyone. Entirely perfect. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's... Oh, you reckon she's entirely perfect? Yeah, oh, that's please. beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> But there's no one out there. <laughs> so the problem is that there's only two places for our souls to go up dead, heaven or hell. But to get into heaven, we need to have a perfect record and nobody has one. Then logically, it would seem we're all headed for. That's kind of hard. Now you might be thinking, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. Now, I thought God loves us, you know. Yeah. Well, there is more to this, so let me explain. It would be great to see what you think of this. The Bible says that God, the creator of the universe, is holy, and heaven is holy, and holy simply means perfect. In the beginning, God made people perfect to have a friendship with him. The Bible also says that all of us have a body and a soul. At death, your body is either buried or cremated, but your soul, the real you, lives on forever, either in heaven or in hell, and there's no third place. Now, do you know anyone who's entirely perfect? No, neither do I. So we have a problem. If there are only two places for our souls to go at death, either heaven or hell, and to get to heaven, we must have a perfect record, and no one has one, then logically, it would seem we are all headed for right. Oh. Now you may be thinking, this doesn't sound right. I thought God loves us. Well, there is more to this. Let me explain. Some people ask us the question, why don't we talk about spirit? We talk about body and soul. Well, we've just tried to keep this simple. We're aware that there's a lot of different theologies around this. Some people believe in a, that we are a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. Some people believe that we are a body and soul and we don't have a spirit at all. There's all sorts of different theologies around this. But remember, our main focus is trying to communicate the gospel to a non-church person. So we don't want to complicate this. But if it's really important to you to add in spirit, then when you say we, the Bible says that all of us have a body and a soul, to say we have a body, soul, and spirit. And that's fine if you want to change that. It's not a problem at all. We start with our authority, the Bible, not just our own opinion. The Bible says that God is holy. This is an extremely important part of the explanation. All good evangelism begins with a description of God. There are some presentations that seem to focus more on us. This is a different approach. It focuses on God and how we fit into His plan and His universe. The foundation is now laid. God and heaven are both holy. If God is holy, then where He lives must also be holy. The word perfect is the simplest and most accurate English word to use with the unchurched as a synonym of the word holy. Now don't get hung up on the word because we're saying it simply means. I was at a Bible college doing some training at one stage and there was a guy there who said, oh, I don't know about this holy meaning perfect. It does mean perfect in the Greek, but it also means to be set apart and went into this big explanation. Now, uh, it does mean perfect and we're not going to get hung up on it. It's not a theological paper. We're trying to just clearly in the most easy way explain to a non-church person what holy means. Establishing early in the presentation that God and heaven are perfect sets a whole platform or foundation on which to build the gospel onto. The next page deals with the human soul, its nature, 
destiny and value. Note that at this point, you may have someone challenge the statement that there is no third place. And they may ask about purgatory. Now, it's important as always not to get into an argument about it. Even those who believe in purgatory do acknowledge that eventually everyone ends up in either heaven or hell. So you can say to them, if you believe in purgatory, it's a place to be purged of your sins in order to get into heaven, correct? They'll say yes, and you say, so we agree. We end up in either heaven or hell. No argument. Now, when we talk about heaven, as Christians, we're talking about the place where the streets are made out of gold, where there's no more crying or pain. Now, according to Revelations 21, this place is called the new city of Jerusalem and comes out of heaven onto the new earth, where we will live with God forever. So if you're speaking with a Jehovah's Witness and they challenge you about the use of the word heaven, saying that, they, you know, that we're supposed to go to the new earth, well, I just agree with them, stating that when we talk about heaven, we're talking about the new city of Jerusalem, which is currently in heaven, that will descend onto the new earth. This diffuses any argument over semantics on a pointless topic. The key issue is to make sure that we make it through Jesus Christ. Now, don't forget your quiz before you finish and to complete your BNS before next week. See you next time.